and to speak to Ian String. Brendan, hi, Ian Stringer up in the commentary box ever, as ever with live. Uh, congratulations on a 2 0 win. Uh, you must have been pleased, particularly with the second half, Brendan, I'd imagine, because Southampton looked good in the first period, but you, you dominated the second, didn't you? Yeah, it was always going to be a really hard fought game. Uh, Ian, um, Southampton, as we see, they're a very good team, they get good players, they work very hard. Yeah, I thought, I thought we were too passive in the first 20, 25 minutes. Um, we weren't running hard enough. We weren't getting to second balls um, and we weren't aggressive enough. So um, but then we started to find our, our way into the game, started to get around it. We had a little break and we talked about, uh, you know, just doing the dirty side much better because then that allows you then to uh, to sustain your attacks more. And Yuri ends up playing a great pass and, and James does what he does best. Lovely body work and then finishes really well. Half time we just reinforced that you know, not every game of football in the Premier League is is all about, you know, nice football. You got to earn the right in the Premier League. This is a, a league where you've got to fight like hell in every game to get the result. And and second half, we were much, much better at that. We were aggressive when we created lots of opportunities and uh, and worked tirelessly in the game. So so overall, a very good win. Could have had more goals, but, uh, but delighted with the three points. That effort and fitness, Brendan, personified, was it not, in the 95th minute by Mark Albright? Could have allowed Bertrand down the left-hand side to get back, but worked really hard to get goal side. Work his man. It falls to Tillemans, and, and Harvey Barnes scores his 10th of the campaign, a, a season high for him now. But did Mark Albright, although, bless him, Pipes didn't give him man of the match. He gave that to Johnny Evans. But Mark Albright, today, again, just his effort and, and endeavour seems to be exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, because you, you need that mixture in your team and I think Mark's a, a great example to every winger that we have at the club that the talent alone isn't enough you, you have to be able to run you have to be able to work you can't carry anyone in this league you know and I thought that the spirit in the team in that collective unit especially in the second half was 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 really really good and, and as you say Mark typifies everything that we would want uh, Harvey Bond's now with 10 goals, Brendan. His best season so far. There's still quite a lot of it left. Um, what improvements have you been most impressed with with Harvey Barnes so far? Clearly finished calmly at the end of the game, but what's impressed you about what he's improved this term? I think he's all around game. I think his tactical understanding of the game uh, is getting much better. Uh, he's become more aggressive without the ball. And uh, his positioning without the ball is, is much better. So then... When we win it back, he's in he's in real good areas, uh, but he, he's such a threat. He carries the ball incredible, you know, from one end of the pitch to the other at times. But he now he's, he's done a lot of hard work in the training field, finishing. He's obviously got the bug now, scoring goals. So once you start to score and the ball hits the back of the net, you want it more. And um, so for a winger, his numbers are improving all the time, and that's something that we, we we've always encouraged him to um, to do. So we're getting into really good areas. Got really good fitness and stamina. And you see right at the very end, he can take it up. And it was a great finish. It was. And in front of the England manager as well, James Madison scored. But James Justin, uh, we wondered whether he caught Gareth Southgate's eye today. A few of your players might have been impressed by the England boss today, Brendan. Do you agree? They all contributed to a really good win, Ian. And uh, like I said, we have a lot of young English players here that are developing really well. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, I'm sure Gareth would have liked what he's seen in, in their performance, in particular second half. Jamie Vardy seems to come off. Was that the, the usual Jamie Vardy hip problem that you've spoken about a lot, Brendan? And if so, is he likely to be okay for Tuesday? Well, we hope so. Uh, he'd obviously, that was obviously sore and, and restrictive for him. So we felt that we just take him off towards the end and try and give him some sort of breather. But yeah, it was that impingement he gets on his hip. And finally from me, Matt Piper described it as a golden problem that you'll probably welcome. Soyuncu came on and really looked to want to impress and certainly did. Ricardo's available for you now. Castagna's back and looking fit. You have got a bit of a, uh, an in, uh, a headache with team selection with, uh, with Wesley Fofana playing so well as well. Is that a problem that you welcome at the minute, I'd imagine, with a fixture schedule? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's always the most difficult thing when players are giving you everything every day in to pick a, a, an 11, but... It's also to to be a really good squad. You need to have competition, and uh, that that was important. Wesley Fofana has been incredible since he's come in. For a boy just turned twenty years of age, I just felt that he got the booking in the first half. 
And then he went into a challenge very early in the second half and he sort of let the guy go past him because he didn't want to get booked. And when you're doing that in a game against, um, you know, a really good team that get the ball forward early and they're going to test you defensively, I just didn't think it was worth the risk when I have a top-class centre-half on the bench. So, uh, but Cags came in and he's working his way now back to fitness and, uh, and back to competitive football. And I thought he was outstanding when he came in. Finally for me, Brendan, lovely that Casper Schmeichel could keep a clean sheet on his 400th game. Yeah, yeah, no, great. Great testament to his professionalism, his, his hunger to succeed. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a real pivotal player for us. And when he's called upon, he, he makes great saves. So uh, that was a nice, nice moment for him. Thanks for your time, Brendan. Congratulations on the win. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Brendan Rogers there speaking. Uh, okay, let's go to Becky Williams from Sky Sports News, please. Hi, Brendan. Just one Hi. for me, if that's OK. And it's on the celebrations again. I know we've been speaking about it a lot, but uh, James Madison's very new to down, calm down celebration. What did you make of it? Yeah, I, I haven't really seen it, to be honest. Everyone's talking about it. and uh, But yeah, I think listen, it's important for, for players to celebrate in, in the right way. I think we're all, you know, we're, we're all in a, in a situation now where we're, we're trying to help and influence People outside of football and uh, and players in general, they, they want to do it for the, themselves, of course, the games, but they also want to help the mood of the nation. And uh, and I think when you score, if you can do it safely and and, and still make people laugh, then that that's what's important in a, what is a tough time. Okay, thanks ever so much. Well done. Cheers. Thanks, Peggy. Okay, let's go to Dan King from the Sun, please. Hi, Brendan. Just on the on the, on the same topic, really. Um, James, when he was interviewed, said that you'd had a word with the players before the game. I mean, what, what, what did you say to them? Did you remind them of their responsibilities? What was your message and how proud are you that they actually followed it? Yeah, I think it's, listen, we all want football to continue and we all have a responsibility to do that. And uh, my players here are absolutely brilliant. You know, everything that they've, they've done to, to be as professional as they can and what is a difficult time. But... What I'd said to them was, I said, look, listen, there's a lot of negativity around celebration. Uh, so can we turn it into a positive? You know, can we, uh, we obviously have to score, but uh, but when we score, just try and, and use it as a positive and let's see, can we uh, social distance in our uh, in our celebration? So, uh, so yeah, but of course, I'm, I'm happy that they can score and happy that they can celebrate. And I think people watching, obviously, want them to celebrate as well in the right way. Thanks, Brendan. Cheers, Dan. Okay, I'm going to go to Rob Draper and then I'm going to do a couple for Mondays. So let's go to Rob, please. Hi, Brendan. Hi, um, Rob. Hi, I know obviously England's not your concern, but having Gareth here and, and James doing well, Harvey, Harvey doing so well, how much of a boost is it for those guys? They've clearly got club affairs on their mind at the moment, but that must be in the back of their mind that there's a potentially big tournament in the summer. No, I think, Rob, I think the, the players are very much focused on what they do here at Leicester. And if they can play well and, and be consistent and play well, then, of course, that will always give them an opportunity. And if you look at the likes of Harvey, what he gives gives the team, you know, he's a different type of winger to, to most of the, the wingers that's around. He's, he's very direct and uh, he's a goal scorer. And uh, he's only going to get better and better. So, so yeah, the likes of him, James Justin, again, showing his versatility and, and his consistency in performance matters, as you say. He's got a great goal. So, yeah, there's a lot of a really good young English talent here that I'm sure goes really well. Thank you. Cheers, Rob. Okay, we'll do it. just do a couple of briefings on Mondays. We'll start with Jordan and then we'll go to John Percy. Jordan first, please. Hi, Brendan. Hi. Um, you had a, a drop off around this time last season. Do you feel, because of those experiences, you feel more confident that you'll you'll keep up the consistency this time around? Well, yeah, I think it's something that uh, we're certainly not going to win every game between now and the end of the season, but we're, we're going to do our best. You know, I think uh, if we look at the team now a year on, I think there's, uh, as I said, that they've made developments both from a, a tactical perspective and, and mentality-wise. And that's just maturity. That's, you know, it is important that you learn from, you know, the mistakes. But I always go back to, you know, the, the biggest common denominator of us dropping off in the latter parts, last 10 games, was 
we'll be missing our best players. It, it's as simple as that. We, we are we don't have the depth of squad and didn't, especially at that period, uh, to be without some of our top players. And uh, and unfortunately, that meant it just drift away. But we still we still finish in a really good position. But all right, we, you know, learn from that and um, keep our humility. Was remaining to be ambitious and work really hard, and uh, yeah, I think the players are, are showing that they have improved in that aspect. Thank you. Cheers, John. Okay, John Percy, then please. Hi, Brendan. Just, Hi, John. Just to follow on from that, really, I just wondered. Obviously, you did have a few unfortunate injuries towards the end of last season. I just wondered if you'd had a chance to maybe look at the training or anything, you know, in the in the post season before the season started about training methods. Any sort of any other analysis you found from, you know, why it sort of petered off a bit? No, no, the, the, the training methods are okay. We'll always analyze the, um, we'll always analyze the, the, the measurement after training and see where, where the intensity is at. But um, our training is very, very important for us. That's why we've been able to jump from mid table and be up. Uh, effectively uh, being competitive at the top, top end of the table. You know, so training for us is, is very, very, very important for the improvement of players, for intensity. And I always believe that you, uh, you, you'll you play how you train. So, uh, so these players work tirelessly every day and, uh, and that's something that we will always monitor and we'll, we have a clear game model uh, and a training methodology that, uh, that, that I totally believe in. Okay, thank you, everybody. Take Jane home. Thanks, John. Cheers, guys.